Hi Lee, how are you? You know you must steal my baby sister. <laughs> I'm going to allow you all time to come on in with me. Currently you're listening to the song by Tamla Mann, titled God Will Provide. I absolutely love this song. And pre-holiday to you all, 4th of July, which is tomorrow. I'm so glad that you're tuning in with me. If you'd be ever so kind to share me with your followers, I would greatly appreciate it. All right? We're going to go and get started in a few. But until then, why don't you enjoy the song by Tamla Mann that God provides. Hello everybody. Hi Giselle. How are you, sweetheart? Alicia, love you. Giselle, it is so nice to have you tune in with me. Alicia, thank you for tuning in with me. I'm going to try to call you all's name as I see you. I know usually when I get started to teaching, everything goes blur. <laughs> okay? But I'm glad that you all are with me. Please be kind and share me with your followers. I would greatly appreciate it. Ooh, I wish I could sing. God provides. Love you too, Alicia. Stay with me. We're about to get started. All right. Let's get started on this. Hope you all enjoyed the song by Tamla Man about God provides. Never forget that God always provides for you, even though sometimes circumstances in life may make you think that God is not providing for you, but he is. I promise you he is. Well, thank you all for tuning in to Bravo Living. I am your host, Dr. Monica Lloyd. I am so glad to have you all with me. Once again, share me with your followers. I greatly appreciate it. I do like hearts. I do like funny faces. I do like any emojis that you can give me. I greatly would appreciate it. I do go back after the show to comment to the things that you say to me. So any questions you want to know, Anything that you want to ask, feel free to type it in there. And after the show is over, I will come back and comment accordingly. Well, I thank you all. Like I said, I can't never say that enough to thank you all for joining me. Um, share me with your followers, like I said. But let's get started. Well, I titled this show on today. Let me start out saying this because I played the song that God provides by Tamala Mann and I played it on purpose. You know, I like to play songs on purpose because a lot of times we forget and we take for granted that as we continue, excuse me, as we continue throughout our day that we think that God doesn't care about us. Uh huh. We think that God is not mindful of us and that he does not know what we're going through or what is going on in our lives. And so I came across this song that I've been listening to by Tamala Mann called God Provides. You know, he is Jehovah Jireh. He is the God that provides. He's the one that gives us everything that we need and when we need it. Know that. He's a God that gives us what we need when we need it. Just know that. Don't ever think that God is not concerned about things that concern you. I don't care what life may toss you away. You have to know that God is there and he's going to provide just what you need when you need it. All right. So that was my little sidebar. But the title of this teaching that I want to do with you all today for our 30 minutes of empowerment lunch is titled God knows what you like. <laughs> Write that down somewhere. God knows what you like. Yeah, he does. He really does. I was sitting at home, and had, this is how I came up with this title. I was sitting at home um, in our new place of residence that my husband and I reside in, and I was looking out my patio window, and I began to look at the view. 
I began to look at the view that was in the front of my eyesight. And as I sat there and admiring my view and the, the, the greenery and the grass and the, and the sounds of the birds and the, the, the aroma that was coming forth from out there in the land, I, I really was sitting there meditating about the goodness of the Lord. And as I was looking at the view that I had from my patio where I reside, the Lord said, isn't it good? that I know what you like. Isn't it good that I know what you like? I didn't just place you in a place where, the, where you may be facing a brick wall or you may be looking in somebody else's kitchen as you look out on your patio. I didn't place a place or a field where old automobiles that are all torn up and destructed that you get to view. I didn't place you where there's drug dealers on the on the street passing out drugs or paraphernalia that's out there, but you're looking at a particular scene. You're looking at a particular view that I have purpose for you to have. And he said, isn't it good that I know what you like? And I've sat there and I began to think, God, you know exactly the things that I like. You know, I want to share this with you. I have a spiritual mom who I love tremendously. I don't get to communicate with her often. I don't get to talk to her every day. And when I get to talk to her, it seems like this has been happening to me lately. When I talk to her for these last couple of days or weeks or whatever, I begin to say some things to her and I begin to verbalize some things to her. And I, then I wind up and she'll say something to me like, I know what you like. You know, she'll, she'll say, I know what you like. And you know what my reply would be? I forgot that you know what I like. I said, I forgot. So I want to say this to you all. Don't take for granted. Let me read it to you. I wrote this down. I said, don't take for granted that just because you don't talk to God every day, that he doesn't know you and that he doesn't know what you like. Because I don't talk to my spiritual mom every day. I don't. I don't talk to her every day. Maybe a couple of weeks pass by before we even communicate verbally. May text and do all of that, but not verbally talk to her voice to voice. And so sometimes when I talk to her and because I forget, listen, that I haven't been in her presence physically being in her presence, that I forget just because I'm not in the midst of her presence all the time, that I forget that she knows me. That she knows what I like. We were discussing some things concerning an upcoming event. And there was something that I wanted to do after the fact. She said, feel free to use it because I know what you like. I know what you like. And see, because you don't get in God's presence the way that you should. Yeah, it's something that you should do. And because you don't communicate with him on a daily basis, and maybe you forgot to tell him thank you when you woke up this morning, or maybe as you got ready to go to your place of employment and you stepped in the midst of the door that you forgot to thank him for a job, or just maybe you and your spouse got up in the midst of the morning and you were in such a hurry because you slept so late that you didn't say goodbye to each other in the morning or give each other a kiss or to show some kind of intimacy or maybe just because your kids got sent off to school and you forgot to pray with them in the morning to cover up that day so that no hurt, harm, or danger comes to them and that just because you forget to get in the midst of God's presence doesn't mean that he don't know you, and it does not mean he don't know what you like. That's because you forgot, but God didn't forget. He knows what you like. He knows what you like. I was thinking about my spouse on today, um, and I was thinking about the time when we started dating, how he found me. I was at Triton College in River Grove, Illinois. My husband found me, and I began before he came into my life. Let me backtrack. I recall the, the, the young men that I dated prior to him finding me, that when I came into salvation, I broke up with a certain individual at that time because I wanted all of my attention and all of me to belong to God. So I had to sever a relationship that I currently was in. And then, you know, 
You get in church and they often tell you, God going to send you a husband. God going to send you your Boaz. God going to send you your Isaac. God, whatever it was, God going to send them to you. Right? So I'm sitting there hearing the messages of what God's going to send me. But do you know what my thoughts were? Does God know what I like? Does he know how I want him built? Does he know how I want his physique to look? Does he know how I want him to look? Does, does he know how I want him to treat me? Does he know what I like? See, my past relationship. what I liked. So coming into salvation, they're teaching me now that God is going to pick for you this time. Because see, your past pickings haven't been looking so Your past picking, if I'm freezing on you all, I'm so sorry. Your past pickings haven't been looking too good. So now I get into the kingdom of God and it is now telling me that God's going to do your picking. Because you didn't pick so well before. And so sitting there, hearing all of this, I get to wonder, does God know what I like? Because I, I really want him to know what I like. You know, I often think about this. I think the show was called Good Times. There was a young man on Good Times who was the janitor by Mr. Bookman. How many of y'all remember Mr. Bookman? Little short guy, big belly, had on the overalls to do the assignment that he needed to do. And oftentimes we'll tell God, I don't want a bookman. I really don't want a bookman. If you can give me a Denzel Washington, I'd be more happy. But I'm, I don't want a bookman. But I'm here to tell you, there's a woman out there designed for Mr. Bookman. For Mr. Bookman. And if God decides that he's going to send an individual, Mr. Bookman, you have to know that he knows what you like. He knows what you like. He knows that you, you may not be into Mr. Bookman, okay? You may not be into Denzel Washington, all right? You may not be into Lawrence Fishburne. You know, I'm, I'm, I love me some Lawrence Fishburne, but that's another story at another time. You may not be into certain kind of people, but isn't it a wonderful thing, hear me, that God still knows what you like. Look at, listen to this. I told you God knows you and God knows what you like. He knows everything about you according to Psalms 139. It says he knows you're getting up. He knows you're sitting down. He knows you're coming in. He knows you're going out. He knows your thoughts are far off. He knows your strengths. And he knows your weaknesses. He knows what tempts you. Listen. He knows what tempts you. And know sometime you will place your own self in the midst of those temptations. Yeah, you will. He knows what tempts you. And he knows where you will place yourself in the midst of those things that tempt you. And he also knows that there's an enemy out there that's willing to set you up. He knows this. And because he knows this about you, dear hearts, because he knows this, he puts something in place called a way of an escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Because he knows you and he knows what you like and he knows your taste buds. He said, even when you place yourself in a tempting kind of way or a tempting environment in a tempting circumstance and that either you put yourself there or an enemy set you up. He said, even if you get in places like that, he said, I provided something for you. He said, but you got to utilize it. I'm not going to make you use it. I provided something for you because I know what you like. I know what you like. I know you used to like going to the club. I know you like dancing. I know you like music. I know you like smoking. I know what you like. But if you allow me to take over your taste buds, I can show you something better. But you got to allow me, you got to allow yourself to take the way of an escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Take the way of an escape because I know you. So because I know there's a setup coming, because I know your strength and your weaknesses, and sometimes your feet take you places, you ain't got no business going. And because of all of this goes on in your life, 
I want you to take my way of an escape when I provide it. Because I know what you like. I know what you like. Oftentimes, when raising our sons, my husband and I, and raising our sons, they would say, Ma, I want so-and-so and so. And we often found ourselves saying, I know, boy, I know what you like. That's why I don't need you to go with me when I go shopping. See, God saying, I know what you like. I just need you to keep praising me, keep your focus on me, and I'm going to bring to you what you like. I know what you like. I don't need you to always tell me what you like. I know you. I know what you need. Oh, since I said that, let's go to this scripture. I know what you need. Go, go with me to Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, since I said it. Go with me to Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Because God knows not only what you like, he also knows what you need. Okay, you may not like a Buckman, but you may need a Buckman. Because Buckman would give you all the love and all the attention that is needed for you to be fruitful in your life. All right? Maybe you don't like a Lawrence Fishburne. All right? That's my, that's my, that's my like. All right? Love my husband. No, I'm still, you know, stay with me. You know, you may not like a Lawrence Fishburne. You may be into more of a Denzel Washington type of man. I'm old school, okay? So you may be into a Denzel. But God knows what you like, but he also knows what you need. And sometimes, just sometimes, the need is going to outweigh the like. <laughs> sometimes, the need is going to outweigh the like. Proverbs 3, while you're turning there, listen to this. The reason that you feel or don't want to allow God, hear me, the reason why you feel or you don't want to allow God to give you or put in his hands the and put some, how do I want to put this? To The reason why you don't allow God and trust him with your likes is because you don't trust God. The reason why you still out there picking, the reason why you still out there seeking, the reason why you still out there doing things that you ain't got no business doing because you figure God is either too slow or you don't believe he knows what you like and you don't trust him enough to give you what you like. So you go forth as individuals setting your own paths, your own journeys, your own endeavors, all because you don't believe God knows you. You don't believe that God likes you. So therefore, you do your own agenda. You did your own meeting. You crawled your own things into existence for yourself because you didn't trust the maker that made you and created you to give you what is required for you to have. You don't trust him. You didn't trust him. Therefore, you went and got Bobby when you should have got James. You didn't trust him. When you got Susie, when you should have got Shirley, you didn't trust him to give you what you like. When I met my husband, I met him, like I said, I, for the first time at Triton College. He walked into the art gallery because I used to work in the art gallery at Triton College. He walked in the art gallery. I was in a relationship with a young man at the time, but when he came through the door, he used to wear these brim hats. I think that's what they call. He used to wear these hats and he came in. He was dressed so, so gentlemanly like, just like I like him. And he was dressed so gentlemanly like that when he came in through the door, through the eye gallery, and I was sitting on the couch at the time, I thought he was a pretty handsome man. I said, I like him. I like him. And as I began to talk to him, I began to like him. Even more. I'm like, God, this is something I like because I'm in the Lord now. This is something I like. But it was a beautiful thing to find out later through my girlfriend at the time that he liked me too. So being married to this man now for 31 years, God gave me what he knew I liked. Not only did he give me what he knew I liked, he gave me also what he knew I needed. 
See, your likes and your needs can collide. And when your like and your need collide together, you on a purposeful journey into destiny. Because God wants you to like what he gives you and he know that you need what he gives you. And if that's the case, you're on a purposeful journey together. I heard this once from a couple. And this couple, it might not, a, the lady said, it might not be all about love in this particular relationship. May not be all about love in this relationship, but it is a whole lot about purpose as far as this relationship is concerned. But it wasn't to say that she didn't like the man that God had placed in her life, but she saw something even further beyond the like that was in this relationship that's going to take this relationship on a journey to destiny. So I like the love will come, but I see the purpose in the relationship. So you got to understand there's a like, there's a need. And when they collide, there's going to be a destiny that is going to unify this union together because God knows what you like. And so let's look at this. You should be at Proverbs 3 now. Proverbs 3, verses 5, 6, 7, and I'm going to add 8. I pray I'm not freezing up on you. And if I am, please forgive me and come back and view this again later. Proverbs 3rd, third, third chapter Proverbs, the Proverbs 3, 5 says this. But before I get to 5, let's read 6. Let me start there. Proverbs 3 and 6 says, In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. I know you all have heard that. In all thy ways, acknowledge God, and he will lead that path straight. In other words, God will lead you if you acknowledge him in everything that you do. If you can acknowledge God, if you can submit to God and the things that he do in your life and give you your likes. If you can submit to God, he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3 and 6. If you acknowledge him. NIV says in all your ways submit to him. Yield to him. You got to go away, God. You got the right away. How you want me to go? What direction you want me to travel? How do you want me to follow you? If you will, if you will learn to ever submit your ways to him, he will make your path straight. But there's a scripture above six, and it's verse five. Because see, before you even get to six, there's something you got to do in verse five. Verse five says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Why? Because I'm going to need you to submit yourself to me as I make your path straight. You get it? God says, before I can get you to submit, you got to learn how to trust me. Nobody submits to anybody that they don't trust. Hear me. Nobody, hear me, submits to anybody in whom they do not trust. If I don't trust you, I don't submit to you. That's only a natural part of me. If I don't trust you, I do not submit to you. It's going to be very difficult for me. And God says, because I know your makeup. And because I know you, first let me get you to trust me. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own understanding. I need you to trust me that if, if even if you get blind, I need you to trust me. And trust that I'm going to lead you somewhere in the midst of you having poor vision. Oh, it's a lot in that. Even in the midst of you having poor vision, I need to know, can you trust me? When it don't look good, can you still trust me? When you don't have everything that you need, can you still trust me? Because, see, I know what you like. Can, can you still trust me? Because, see, after I can get you to trust me and not to lean to your own intellect, your own understanding, your own way of thinking, once I can get you to trust me and get all that foolishness out the way, I now need you to be able to submit to me. 
Because if you're able to submit to me, which means you will follow me, I'm going to lead you somewhere. But you got to trust me. You got to trust me. You got to trust that I know what's best for you. You got to trust me. So five says, trust in the Lord with all in your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Six says, in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. So you got the trust factor working. You're able to submit to him. And because he's, you're able to submit to him, he's able to lead you somewhere. Some places you have never imagined yourself to go. He's able to lead you somewhere. And then he says, now, because you trust me and I, I'm able to lead you and you're able to submit. Then he goes down to seven. He said, but do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. You trust me. You're submitting to me and you're allowing me to lead you. But don't you get caught up in your own wisdom of your own eyes. Be not wise now in your own eyes. Just because I may place something before you because I know what you like and I know what you need. I'm going to place this before you. And then you get to traveling along with me and you think you see something better. That you, now you want to leave the path that I have you on and you want to go into another direction. Don't you get wise in your own eyes. Just because it looks good over there don't mean it's meant for you. Come on now. You stay submitted to me. You keep trusting me. Stay on this path I'm going to lead you. Don't you get your eyes to wandering all over the place. Stay focused, grasshopper. Stay focused. And so therefore, because you're trusting in me in all your ways, you're submitting unto me, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. And then verse 8 says this. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Proverbs 3 and 8. This, what is this? Trusting in me, submitting to me, allowing me to lead you, not being wise in your own eyes, fearing the Lord, shunning evil, you know what this will do for you, baby? It will bring health to your body and get arthritis out your bones. <laughs> it will bring nourishment to your bones. Your body will be healthy. You know why your body will be healthy? Because you trust me to take care of you. And therefore, no anxiety, no depression, no, um, no ulcers, no, 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 no anything can just pop up in the midst of you because you are trusting me to guide you and lead you and I'm going to lead you to a good place and you're not trying to be all, all wise in your own ass trying to figure things out for yourself because you're trusting me, God says. And because of that, you're healthy. Your bones are working. Your limbs, you know, your old people, old Christians used to say, I have the activities of my limbs. You got the activities of your limbs and ain't nothing cracking and aching. Because now you're healthy. You're trusting in somebody that knows how to give you what you like. Let me tell you what like is. You're trusting him to give you what you like. In this, like is this. There are things that sometimes you can compare things like I like chocolate ice cream. Why? Compared to I don't like vanilla or strawberry. Like is indicating certain qualities or features that you like. I like it when my husband has his beard all shaved and lined up and, and all of this, you know. And I, I like that compared to when he's naked face. No hair, nowhere. I like. So God knows what your, your qualities and features are. He knows how you want certain things set up for your life. He knows I don't like a nasty house. He knows I don't like that. So he gives the unction of my healthy body to clean my home. He knows what I like. He knows the views that I like to look at. Compared to now, listen to this. But he also knows what I need. He also knows what I need. And need is a requirement. It is a necessity that one has to have. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all of my needs 
according to his riches and glory, which is a great indication that no matter what I need, he's able to supply. Because the man is loaded. He is able to supply every need that I need. He's able to supply. I think about the time when my husband and I, our money was low, and there were certain things that I liked. I like steak. I like pork chops. I like bacon. I like anything pork. I like. But because our money was very funny, and I couldn't afford steak, pork chops, or the things that I like, God was able to provide for us exactly what we needed, which was some bread. He was thankful enough to give us a Miracle Whip, because I like Miracle Whip. And he had us with some bologna, and he had us with some hot dogs. But there was no way in the world I could say that God didn't feed us. Might not have been what I liked, but I had what I needed. Why? Because I trusted him. I was willing to submit to him so that he can lead me somewhere. Wasn't trying to be wise in my own eyes and go with the little money we had and go purchase what I like anyway. Then we didn't have anything. That's not being wise in my own eyes. And so therefore we were still allowed to be healthy and our bones still was able to be intact. Just because I didn't get what I like didn't mean I didn't get what I needed. So the title of this today was God Knows What You Like. But the reason why you don't trust God with your likes is because you don't trust God with your likes. Because you think he's going to give you something that you just have to accept. That's an unjust God. He doesn't work like that. He know what his kids like. You know what your kids like. You know what kind of gym shoes they like, what kind of jeans they like, what kind of cars they like, what kind of job they refuse to work at. You know what they like. So you give your kids what they like. What makes you think God won't give you what you like? And it's going to be exactly what you need. Often time as I close, I, you know, that's how the preachers do. As I close, I think about my husband a lot, this man whom I absolutely love. And some may look at him and think he's not knowledgeable as far as the word of God is concerned. Me having my doctorate in divinity. And so some look at him and say, well, your wife is a doctor, but you're not whatever. And so therefore, I see in this man what God has placed in him as me being his helpmeet, but also him being exactly what I need in my life. Because you got to remember, I made some bad choices before because of what I liked and the qualities and the features that I saw. So that's what I based it on. Never looked at nobody's heart. Never looked at nobody's attitude and demeanor. Never looked at how they carried themselves. But because they looked good, I thought it was for me. Because that's what I liked. It was the quality and the features of what I like. God says, look, I know your quality. I know your features. But I also know this man of God that I need to give to you. And his name is George Lloyd. And you're going to like him. Why? Because I trust God. I was submissive, I was, I'm, I'm submit, submissive to God. I trust the path that he leads me on. And so I can be healthy. I don't be wise in my own eyes. And so when he brought this man of God in my life, and I told you all when he came in Triton College, he had this Bram hat on. And he was dressed very gentlemanly the way I like them. And I like talking to this man. And then this man decided that he liked me. And he wanted to be with me. And so therefore, in the process of me being who I am and him being who he is and God bringing that together has now allowed a 31-year union. All because he trusted the help me that God was giving to him. And I trusted what God as a man was giving to me. That now we are together, there's purpose for our union and our three sons. There's much to be desired as far as this relationship is concerned. All because God knows what I like. And I trust God. Hear me. I trust God to know me, because he does. 
and I trust God to provide for me, which he does, and I trust God to give me everything that I need, which he does. And in addition to, as is stated in Genesis, after God created things in the midst of that garden, there were some things that God said, I put in this garden that's going to be just pleasant to the eyes. Pleasant to the eyes, because I know what you like. And so as I started out, I was sitting on my patio, looking at my view, and God said to me, isn't it wonderful that I know what you like? And I'm here to say, it is wonderful that God knows what I like. So I want to say unto you, as I get out of here, God knows what you like. And God also knows what you need. So trust him. Be submissive to him. Don't be wise in your own eyes, and this will make you have a healthy life and nourishment to your bones. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. You all be blessed, and I thank you all for tuning in with me, your host, Dr. Monica Lloyd, as we talk about Bravo Living, better results with a victorious outlook. Please go visit my website, www.drmonicalloyd.com, and purchase my book today. I've fallen and I must get up. Being in a lower state is not where God desires us to be. He wants us to get up for a just man, just man rises seven times. And I believe you're just. So visit my website. I really would appreciate it. Thank you for congratulating me on my book. Now I need you to go and purchase my book. All right. So be blessed, you all. Tune in with me next Monday at 12 noon Central Standard Time, Facebook Live, and have a safe, and a beautiful 4th of July. It is your Independence Day. Continue to be free in the Lord. Love you now. Bye-bye.